Hello again, body boyos. I just went out for another walk and I'm gonna continue rambling from where I left off in my last video. I was talking about my early childhood, more particularly as far as uh, my early childhood in regards to home education which I didn't get any of that my parents didn't bother to raise me properly I mean not from a educational and a spiritual okay not spiritual but like from a mental perspective they didn't give two shits and uh, yeah from a material perspective it was fine but from a mental it was bad and then I went into uh, school, right? So my childhood in school, all the way up to uh, first grade. So now I'm going to cover my uh, junior high or middle school experience, or better said, from actually, no, I'm going to cover primary hopefully all the way till middle school so in case you didn't watch my previous video well if you'd want to understand this video a bit better or to you know take it in chronological order I suggest you click on on this card I'm gonna put it up in editing watch the first video of my early childhood so this is gonna be my mid childhood particular in terms of school I'm not gonna bother too much with uh, you know my home activities I'm probably gonna put that in separate videos but uh, where I left off was first grade right after I became an outcast compared to all the other kids So, hold on a second. Okay, so yeah. Ah, talking about first grade. So, put it simply, I was an outcast, especially in regards to the other, you know, kids from class, or at least to the normie your kids there were a few of the the preppy kids with which I sort of kind of hung out with more and honestly my memory is not perfectly clear in first grade especially in second third and fourth I mean I know what happened but I don't exactly know the order of certain happenings right all I know is that at one point, I think it was second semester of first grade, there came a new kid, a transfer student. And this guy, I'll call him E because his name starts with E, right? He, you know, no, for fuck's sake. I would fucking, I would fucking shoot these dogs. I would shoot them and I'd shoot their owners. But anyway. So, this guy, this new guy, E transferred, right? And even though I was pretty much a pariah, all the other kids agreed on one thing. And it was a lot thanks to, you know, the fact that the teacher encouraged this stuff that I was good at drawing. So whenever drawing class uh, took place, my, draw my drawings were usually brought to the front. Like the first few best drawings were displayed. And in that regard, I was kind of, you know, respected and stuff. Well, this new kid, E, they made us draw houses, right? Everyone drew normal houses. He was probably the only one who Draw, drew a, a multi-story house, you know, 
like trying to seem smarter and shit. And to an extent, it was a smart move. I'm not gonna lie. But I will admit, it made me a bit jealous because it wasn't the only thing that I was, you know, praised for or you know looked at with a certain degree of uh, of respect and stuff like that. But that day, everyone was looking at this dude's drawing. But anyway, along the line, I started to befriend this E dude, right? This E guy. And uh, in spite of me being like considered a pariah, oh, hold on, this fucking bus. In spite of me being considered a pariah, uh, he befriended me, we became friends. We were relatively close, right? And uh, and uh, this guy, I even went to his home and we hung out and we actually had some fun times. But at a certain point, and this was kind of the fault of my upbringing too, and a few weird events. There were a few times when I forgot to, you know, to say good day to his mom or something when we, when I went to visit, which I do admit, not not good optics, indeed. And his parents were also kind of strict with him, but not in the same stupid way that my parents were. I mean, at least his parents, yeah, they were strict, but at the same time they were uh, fair with him, right? But indirectly because of me, he ended up having problems because of that. And then there were a lot, of, a lot of other slew, there was a whole slew of other events that sort of made us become more like frenemies, you know? Like, but that was primary school, you know? And this wasn't so bad. But then came like fucking fifth grade. And uh, in fifth grade, I was pretty fucking lonely. It was a pretty fucking lonely uh, time at school. Okay, so if that was the most lonely time in my life. I mean, maybe not in my life, but definitely in my childhood. Because, uh, not necessarily because of school, but because uh, there was a really close friend of mine at the time who lived around the same neighborhood, who didn't, just simply no longer hung out with me and stuff. I should be talking about that guy in the video, but that person was fucking... I mean, he wasn't, he was not a piece of shit or a bad person, but he was sleazy and because of him I wasted, uh, because, you know, a lot of time, because, you know, if it, when you grow up, you know, lonely and with parents who also have no friends, you also won't have any occasions to build any actual friends with other people. So, you know, it was easy for me to befriend someone and be, like, super fucking dependent on that person, you know. So, yeah, fifth grade was really nothing too eventful other than this. But then fast forward to, like, sixth grade. And that's when things really started to, you know, take a dark turn. In our class, we had three other guys who were repeat year students. Like, you know, students that failed. They should have been seventh grade, but because they their grades were just so bad, they were you know put in the same class as us. You know they were just failed for one year and then they had to recuperate and they were transferred to our class. It was the same school, just you know you get my point. And they, they were repeat years. And one of these guys was a gypsy guy. But he had Chad features on his face, it, even though he was ethnic. He had like these greenish blue eyes, but he was a fucking gypsy, 100%. Like pretty dark skin, dark hair. 
but this guy at first I didn't think much of him but at a certain point I remember we used to you know in our schools this is how they taught us to keep your pencil box like at the edge of the desk where you where you sit at right and that's the th one day I know that he came by and for no reason just punched my pencil box but for no fucking reason I guess it's just stupid hormones of the 13 year old testosterone fuck knows and I just told him some profanity or something granted I shouldn't have done that because obviously you talk smack you get you know whatever is coming for you but th his reaction was you know pretty fucking nasty he directly went to the intimidation and I doubt I could have beaten this guy although I should have tried honestly well now now that I look back if I knew how bad my life would turn out I would have fucking confronted every boy even though I would have been scared as fucking even if I would have gotten expelled or my ass beaten I w that's what I would have done if I knew what the future had to hold but yeah I was a coward and I didn't do nothing and since then this guy bullied me relentlessly I mean relentlessly in the, in the sense that whenever he had the chance I was an obvious target it was me and the previous guy from my previous video who I said that I knew since kindergarten and whose fucking older cousin uh, beat me so that guy was also a bully target for the act ironically that guy was an even bigger uh, target for this dude for this gypsy guy but I was the second you know worse off so still not good i mean i could i could tell you guys what how i got bullied like i know i remember every single time he would steal my you know my my ballpoint pens like it got so bad that to a certain point i had to use you know crayons like graphite crayons because for interestingly he wasn't interested in using those but so i only wrote with crayons all all the way from sixth grade to eighth grade I only wrote with crayons because I was always afraid of losing my ballpoint pens like I lost fuck knows how many uh, he never came to school with with any equipment basically he just came to classes and he chose his bully victims to have him you know give him a pen and he obviously never gave it back and yeah because of that I, I know one day I, l I was left without anything to write with so basically yeah I had to suffer because of this guy and the teachers obviously never do anything and even if I would have reported likely they wouldn't have done shit and with other occasions what else well if I try to do something he would fucking hit me if that there was once I remember we had PE or something I think and it was winter time so we obviously had jackets as well and I left this was a mistake I left a jacket of mine resting on the chair right on my school desk chair and when I came back from class this guy poured fucking coke in uh, the hood of my jacket because it was a, a, a hoodie type of a jacket and yeah I had to bring that home I told my mom look here whatever like honestly it was so bad at this point like in the in a physical way the bullying and you know it was just so bad that I really think that if I would have just never went to school like from fourth or fifth grade onwards I would have had a much better mental health than I do now and, and that's why I'm a, I'm a, a very big advocate of, of anti-public school advocate like if I'd have kids I'd never send them to public school if they really want to I would send them to private school but that's expensive and if I don't have money sure this is hypothetical because I'm a fucking inkel and I'll, and I'll never never be able to do that but just hypothetically in my mind like I, I really couldn't understand how people still send their kids to fucking public school it's fucking insane like I'm not really much of a fan of conservatives but in this regard I kind of agree with them 
like legit. For fuck's sake, hold on. So many people with fucking cars. I'm already home anyway, because I just gave up walking because there's way too much interference today and I don't understand why. Yeah, where was I? Yeah. So, yeah, 6th, 7th, 8th grade was pretty much all this. Like, pretty fucking bad bullying, especially from this guy. And back home, I had circles of friends and stuff who were, who were actually pretty nice hanging out with them. But the only reason all those people came around was because of fucking pussy. Because, like, two houses away from me, I had some neighbors, and they, they were two girls, right? And, of course, guys were flocking around and shit, trying to chat them up. It was, it's cringe, but, you know, those are the times. But, yeah... This was this was my fucking school and childhood story more or less very you know shortly shortly uh fucking compiled in in one video like all the way from first to like eighth grade it was bad I mean this is the thing all that fucking bullying and feeling horrible and that, that was the first time in my life when i started to think about suicide i mean i was 14 i remember i i was considering the rope like it, because it breaks down your fucking sense of self and pride and dignity when you get bullied for like so viciously and for so long and i i even thought about a stupid method like s asphyxiation like i thought about getting a plastic bag on my head and just wrapping it around my neck with some something to seal it tight but then I found out that's a very painful way to go and obviously I didn't do it but that was the first time I started to think outside of my blue pill programming sure I, I didn't know nothing about what's red pill black pill, purple pill those terms weren't even thro thrown around at that time and I didn't, I mean it was I didn't actually have internet or wait, 2007, I was about 8th grade, so it was only the beginning for me when it comes to, you know, internet and stuff, so I didn't really know about these kind of terms, but, and also I was still a teenager, so, you know, but honestly, if stuff like that would happen to me now, when I'm no longer a teen, when I no, long, no longer have that mental fortitude, I'd either do something drastic, which would probably get me into more trouble than the than my torturers, or I'd just run away and I don't know, become a beggar or something, because you know, I'm actually surprised. I mean, I went through so much shit. I guess you guys can tell by you know, me talking about these. I went through so much shit. I'm actually surprised I didn't, I didn't, engage in self harm or anything. Like, it's fucking insane. Whenever I fucking think about these things, it just depresses me. These are pretty old memories. I mean, these are the kind of things I no longer think too much about. I do remember all of them, but it's rare that I really think about them. I mean, the things that plague me the most right now are the things that happened in the last four years or so, everything before that. I mean, it's, you know is just behind. I'm not saying they didn't form me in a negative way, of course. They fucked me up mentally, all these experiences, I mean, how could they not? Even if you're a healthy person, like with no genetic predisposition to mental illness, experiences like these are gonna cause you mental illness. And right now I'm pacing around in my backyard. Ah. <sighs> So yeah, I don't know what else to say. Badly structured video anyway. I mean, I paused it in the middle just to come back home because walking was just it was too much distraction. And there was even a fucking dog that escaped. This fucking 
owner's house and it was a big dog so I was like fuck that unless I w I'm very fucking angry one day and I want to fucking kill animals I might have stood but I said screw that I was joking when I said kill animals I have nothing against them I like animals but uh, seriously people around here are just so negligent with their pets they're just stupid people like these don't deserve having pets they, they deserve to be fucking hanged uh, anyway I'm gonna quit this video right now so this was kind of my middle childhood school experience and I'm gonna continue with the final part where I'm gonna talk about high school and maybe college but college was really far less eventful college was just basically a time of wastefulness like I learned nothing of significant substance and whatever I did we just glossed over it really fast and college doesn't help you with nothing in life and I just met a few people who I no longer am in contact with because they're they live far away and that was basically college so yeah I, I think I dragged this long enough I'm gonna end right now see you in the next in the next part